the 2023 La Dame de Scopier New York Scholarship Reception. <laughs> honor of introducing our guest speaker who I know is going to inspire us, each and every one of us in this room, Akimi DuBose Woodson. Akimi's bio is in your program book, which was designed by Dom Ronnie Campbell, but I will share some insights from her very impressive resume. In 2020, Akimi co-founded the Roots Fund, a nonprofit organization committed to helping more people of color gain access to the wine industry. As chief executive officer, Akimi oversees the organization's scholarship program. Raised in Brooklyn, I know Brooklyn people like to get loud. Raised in Brooklyn. And Kimi got her start with scholarship from CCAP, which is another one of our partners. She attended Johnson and Wales University and received a scholarship from La Dame de Scopier in Boston. After graduating, she traveled the world studying culture through food. Upon her return to the States, Akimi was the youngest and first woman to complete the Marriott and Rich Carlton Management Training Program. Akimi has led culinary and management teams at sports organizations, restaurant groups, and prestigious educational institutions. Akimi is an outspoken advocate for social change and champion for equity and inclusion throughout the hospitality and beverage industry. She says, when there is no room for me at the table, I usually stand on the table. <laughs> Please welcome Akimi DeBose Wilson. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank you to all the doms that have invited me. Um, congratulations to all the scholars. I'm hoping that I can give you a few words that will give you some wisdom. Um, aside from hearing about my bio, uh, I started out as a chef. And for me, nonprofit organizations, work that's happening here is so important and so impactful. It set me on a trajectory for the rest of my life. Without CCAP, without Les Dames, I would not have been a chef. I would not even aspire to have that. We didn't have ice when I came up. There was Le Cordon Bleu, had a small sector here in the city. You went to CIA, you went to Johnson & Wales, or you went to Le Cordon Bleu in France, and those were your options. And for a young girl from Brooklyn, coming from a home with both parents, but both of them not really living um, economically in a high range to afford college, I had to really go off my education and whatever scholarships that I could gain. So an organization that took me in, took me in for the rest of my life. To this day for CCAP, I probably run a quota of about 200K a year that I fundraise for them. Um, it's important to me to continue to do that. I am on speed dial with their <laughs> to run out and host a dinner, contribute something, find a way to fundraise. So it's super important to all the scholars here today, stay engaged. These are your mentors. These are the beginning of you building your network, which is the biggest part of establishing a career. If I didn't have people in the industry to guide me, to tell me who to talk to, to tell me how to present myself, what I needed to have for my resume, all of that came from the organization I was involved in. So definitely utilize your resources and your contacts here. But I began my career in the culinary world. At the end of college, you know how everyone's getting ready and they're like, oh, I got a job here. I got placed here. I'm going to internship here. I, I didn't plan. I worked the whole time I was in college. I didn't have the luxury of like hanging out. So I was like, oh, I just thought I'd keep working my job. Mm -hmm. And my job was like, oh, the school year is over. So we're finished. There's nothing for you to do. So I packed up a backpack and I asked my chef that I worked for here in New York to give me some contacts overseas. I really had not really experienced being out of the country. And that's something that came from CCAP. I reached out to them and they connected me with chefs and Michelin stars all around the world. I backpacked for two years and I came back wow. and got a job as a sous chef. As a woman at that time, unheard of. I had applied for a million jobs when I had finished school. No one would hire me. Women weren't leaders in kitchens. Um, every woman I knew was in pastry. I can't bake. <laughs> I don't measure. It's not my thing. I, don't, I can't even bake a basic bread. During the pandemic, I was just home like, send me bread. Because you know, I can't do anything. I don't know how to bake. But I went around the world and I came back here and I realized that being a chef was just the avenue. My passion was to work with people, to be a connector. And that's really what I wanted to continue to facilitate. So as a chef, um, I didn't want to have a one-track mind. 
So I went out and said, what else can I learn? So I went into the front of the house and I learned how to do front of the house management, became a GM, became a regional director, and eventually led to building my own consulting firm. So I continued to educate myself, not necessarily waiting for someone to tell me what to do. I was constantly reading books. I was going to seminars and events. I was finding out about festivals. And I was always going with a business card, because back then that's all you had. But now I've got it on the phone, so if anyone wants to connect with me, I'll be ready. But I've never missed an opportunity to meet someone and add them to my collection of people that I had met and figure out how do I keep that conversation going? How do I check it? And a couple of years ago, right before the pandemic, I went out and said, okay, I'm going to leave the restaurant world and I want to work for a nonprofit. And I had went around to several nonprofits. I interviewed, they said no. I got really discouraged because mm -hmm. I spent so many years helping out with charity, understudying, working with mentors, and no one would give me this job. And I was like, I want to be an executive director right away. <laughs> How's this going to happen? So right away, what was my first inclination? Build my own. And I took all the mentors that I knew. Women I knew at Susan G. Coleman, women at CCAP, women at Boys and Girls Club. I took this network of women that I had met over the years and said, can you mentor me? I want to start an organization. I'm very proud we're in our third year's Roots Fund, serving communities of color in the wine industry. We're expanding to spirits in 2024, and we have already raised over $2.5 million. Woo! And we were all volunteer at one point, but now I have to actually pay these people. <laughs> They're like, oh no, those numbers coming in the door, we need paychecks and benefits. Um, so I say that to really say like, as I've moved through every profession of my life, I continue to network with people. I continue to always keep my resume fresh. I had a young woman approach me in the airport this morning in San Francisco and said, oh my God, you're that Roots Fund lady. I've been looking for a role. Pitch me in under five. I said, you got five minutes before I go in here and take this nap. She pitched me in five minutes. I'm gonna have my assistant set up an interview with her. Do I have a position open right now on my team? No, I do not. But her passion and enthusiasm came through. She had her resume right with her. She wow. looked well, shook my hand, looked me right in my eyes, all of these things. I said, she's got some great mentorship around her. This is someone I want to keep in my Rolodex. So the next time I have a role open, she'll be at the top of my list. So I'll tell everyone, stay ready. You never know who you're going to run into, who you're going to meet. Don't be afraid to approach people. Learn how to feed off that energy. Know when to take a step back when people are not in the mood. But know always to just be yourself positively. That's what people will receive. If you have to work somewhere where you have to change, that shouldn't be where you're working. Okay, sometimes I go to meetings with execs and I'm kind of like a full sweat suit. That usually means I came right from the airport, but I make sure they get that information just as solid as if I'm in a regular suit. Tonight was important to me. And even though I knew I said, I think I'm going to be late, I was like, I have to take a shower. I have to put on the suit that's been with me all day on the plane. I have to put myself together because I want to give you the best representation of myself. So I say that to say you're always building your personal brand. Be conscious of social media. We're addicted to it, all of us. My social media account is private. Not because I'm hiding anything, because people are weird. <laughs> and um, white people are very aggressive. And they harass me and send me all kinds of messages. And then people write things in the comments of pictures of my little one. I don't like that. So I like blocked it off. Our PR person had her hates me. But um, in the social age now, it is the best marketing tool, but it's also a very dangerous space. Even when companies tell you they're not looking, they're looking. Okay? I hired two new people in the past few weeks. You know, my interns came back with a full expose. I said, guys, this is illegal. They said, no, we didn't know who's coming in here. We didn't know everything about them, what their likes. You know, she doesn't eat this. How's she going to go off for sushi with us? Like, that's a thing that we do. So I tell everyone now, you know, be conscious of your, your social presence. It's like, pretend like you're going to be president. My grandma told me that when I was little. Live your life as if you're going to be president. And you'll make smarter decisions about what you do going forward. Everyone has made mistakes. Don't let those mistakes keep you down. That's what they call it. Mistakes are lessons. Take a lot of loss. I love a good loss. I tell everybody, two L's is really a W. Wow. So if you see me lose twice, I'm about to come through big. <laughs> so I love it when I get one loss. I said, give me one more. Because something, something bigger is about to happen for me. But come with that positive energy about yourself. Always believing in yourself is the first step. We live in a world where we're kind of always judging and comparing ourselves to others. Focus on yourself. That's what's going to take you to the next level. People around you who elevate you are the support that you need. These are the kind of people that you need to have around you. If people are 
not being good to you or being negative or telling you why are you aspiring to be so high. I listened this morning on the plane to a woman across from me telling her friend, you're, you're aiming too high. You haven't done anything like that. She got up and went to the bathroom. I said, you're on the right track. <laughs> Your friend is upset about her life. You stay on this track because someone's going to find a way to believe in you. And if you get a great person you interview with, they're going to give you pointers to tell you why you missed and what you need to do to go forward. It's always an opportunity. So focus on that when you're doing anything in your career, anything in life. Um, super proud to have been here today and been asked to speak. Um, I feel like I haven't covered everything, but she read so much of <laughs> Why are you telling people all of this stuff? Um, but Lake Domus has always been special to me. As I said, I got a scholarship. Um, back then, in those times, you got your scholarship based on the location of your school and your state. So I kind of got shuffled into Boston, but the New York chapter was very receiving of me, um, had given me awards throughout the years, had helped me with my first job I got through Lake Domus. Um, when I worked at the World Trade Center Marriott and I worked at Windows in the World, came wow. from Dom's who I had oh, met wow. at a dinner. And I had already had a career in the kitchen for three years before I went to college, thanks to this organization. So I am forever grateful. Maybe one day they will invite me in. You think so? <laughs> anybody know anybody? <laughs> oh, they should let me in. I, I've got good wine. <laughs> um, but it was great to, to see, you know, how this organization has evolved. I got my... Uh, Scholarships in the Boston chapter. It was a different time then. Um, I had walked into a room of predominantly all white women and men, and it was a little uncomforting when I was 17 years old. I went to college at 17. You know, I had graduated early, so it's like I'm in this room. I don't know anything about wine. I've been exposed to fine food. It was a little bit scary, but it was also great to have so many women who walked up to me. It was like, I Kimmy, it's so great to meet you. Um, can I, how can I help you in your career? When I moved to Boston and got the job with the Red Sox, it came from a dom who had recommended me. And I was like, I'm working for the Boston Red Sox. I was like, hey, like, this is powerful. Okay, I was just making chili in the beginning, but <laughs> and then that's great to the fine dining room. And then I personally worked for the players, so it was a stepping stone. And that's another lesson in taking life. Sometimes you gotta take a little step to get somewhere else. And when you get to your ceiling, you gotta be prepared to move on to somewhere else to elevate your career. That doesn't mean run. This generation now is like, oh, I worked for six months and I'm leaving, I need a raise. You haven't experienced life. Take a step back, learn, get settled in your footing, feel confident in the information you can put out, and that's the best way you move forward. And that's really for anyone, whether you're a scholar here today or just an adult. I tell my team all the time, learn, master this, and then ask me about this. Don't ask me about this if you haven't mastered this. You know, be a master of your craft and constantly educate yourself. You know, I tell, our performance, our HR manager all the time, she says that I push my team so hard. And I tell them all the time, I've given you training, but what are you doing on your own? What are you doing to show me that I should elevate you? So keep that in mind. You're always looking, you're always reading. I'm always at the airport bookstore picking up one of those Harvard Business Journals. I really just read them to attack them. Um, I write long letters to Harvard. During the pandemic, I actually told them I should get a teaching degree because I was teaching my five-year-old at home and I feel like I should get a degree from Harvard. <laughs> I wrote them a letter and 2022 in January, I got a letter back that said that this is posted in their office of admin because it was the most hilarious thing they ever <laughs> Because I told them my name, how I wanted it printed on my degree as early childhood education. Um, because I had been home in the pandemic with a five-year-old um, and I was forced to be an educator. You know, I also now send my little one's teacher gifts every Friday because I, I know what she's going through and she's doing it with 15 of them. I had one, um, so I pray for her and I do understand why she locks herself in the closet during free time. <laughs> just need some time alone. But uh, I hope some of the words I've given you today are inspiring. Um, definitely connect with me when we break after this. I would love to talk to as many people as I can to give you any sort of wisdom or any sort of advice. But we are living in a world that is absolutely crazy and we have to make time for ourselves. And I live every day with quotes. You know, and I feel like right now we are in this time, if you learn anything from the pandemic, it's about living in your purpose, right? Doing things you're passionate about and seeing how that can turn into revenue. And James Baldwin is like my favorite. And I gave this one in a lecture I taught yesterday. You have to go the way your blood beats. If you don't live the only life you have, you won't live some other life. You won't live any life at all. Thank you for having me.